what I, what I want to say is that the positive ions or the cations are always going to form from uh, metals. And there is one example that is a not that made out of non-metals. And it is the ammonium ion, NH4 plus. So, but otherwise, you're always going to see cations made out of metals or metal ions. The negative ions will be made out of non-metals. And there will be several examples of them being made out of bonded non-metals as well. But it's really important in this course to be able to tell what kind of bond is being formed in a compound. And one of your main clues is to look for a metal. And so according to our periodic table, if you look at our zigzag staircase here, all of the elements to the left of this zigzag staircase are metals. Here's sodium. Sodium is definitely a metal. It's all the way over to the left-hand side of the periodic table. In fact, it is a very metally metal, which means it has properties that are very characteristic of metals. Um, all of these, though, are metals, and all will form cations. And the non-metals are up here, and uh, it is important to know the difference. So we have a metal, sodium. This is going to be an ionic compound, and uh, an ionic bond is going to look at, so let's say, sodium, and that says Na plus in there, and here's chloride, which is a little bigger, with Cl minus. And the ionic bond the ionic bond is the attraction of oppositely charged oppositely of opposite charges. The ionic bond is the attraction between opposite charges. Okay, uh, that, and so uh, if we have sodium and chloride, sodium being what's called a plus one and chlorine or chloride being a minus one ion, we can think about the attraction between these two and then we can think about the attraction in calcium oxide. Calcium is a two plus ion and here I'll write just plus two and here's oxygen which is minus two. And there is an ionic bond formed. The ionic bond is the strength, or the ionic bond is the attraction between the opposite charges. And what I'm gonna suggest is that a calcium oxide ionic bond is four times stronger than a sodium chloride ionic bond. And in a very physics-y way, that is because there is four times stronger attraction And it turns out that according to, uh, and I'm gonna recall this number three down here, according to something called Coulomb's law, um, the ionic bond energy or strength is proportional to the product of charges where product just means that you multiply them multiply charges and that's just a scribble out there 
And we won't say anything about this now uh, because we haven't talked about the sizes of ions before, but the product of charges divided by the distance between ions. So we haven't talked about sizes yet, but when the ionic bond energy or strength is proportional to the product of the charges, that means that plus two times minus two is minus four. It is four times stronger than plus one minus one, which multiplied equals minus one. And again, these are ionic bonds. The other type of bonding is what's called the covalent bond. And a covalent bond forms between two non-metals that share electrons in one or more bonds. And I have two examples here, carbon dioxide and H2O, or water. And what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to draw what's called the Lewis structure. Just to show you what a covalent compound looks like with bonds, we will go over how to do this in this course, but later on. So carbon dioxide has, well, let me draw it and then I'll describe it. So uh, in this picture, which is called a Lewis structure, each dash is a bond and each dash is two shared electrons because that's what a bond is. So I'm gonna write that here, each dash is a covalent bond, which is two shared electrons. Okay. And we'll talk about the dots in a second, but let me show you H2O. So each dash is two shared electrons the oxygen and this hydrogen share two electrons. That's one dash. Here, carbon and oxygen share two pairs of electrons. That's why there's two dashes. And this is called a double bond. And a total of four electrons are shared there. So, and then the other thing I want to point out is these uh, pairs of dots. Each pair of dots is called a, a non-bonding pair of electrons. And it's also sometimes called a lone pair because they are these two electrons are only associated with the oxygen. They are not shared and they are not bonding with anything. Okay? All right. So, and again, we can see carbon and oxygen and hydrogen, they're all non they're all three non-metals. One of the things that's confusing is that hydrogen is all the way up here on the periodic table, even though it's on what might be considered the metal side of the periodic table. Always remember that hydrogen is a non-metal and as a non-metal, hydrogen forms covalent bonds. So note, hydrogen is a non-metal and forms only covalent bonds. meaning that hydrogen only shares electrons with neighboring atoms. Now again, this is an important concept to be able to grasp what's the difference between an ionic bond and a covalent bond, or an ionic compound and a covalent compound. And we said that in ionic compounds, there's a metal. So key in on the metal. And you'll know it's an ionic compound. Here, non-metal, non-metal, only non-metals, where again, hydrogen is a non-metal. This is a covalent compound with covalent bonds. And 
H's and O's, same thing there. Now, polyatomic ions, a polyatomic ion, ion has covalent bonds holding the atoms, atoms together. Its properties are dominated by being an ion. So if we look at the sulfate ion, sulfate will end up having a Lewis structure that looks like this. Well, we're not done, but I'll let you draw that. And then it will have more electron pairs or lone pairs on the oxygens. And again, we don't know how to do this yet. We will, and we will actually be very good at this. Because it's a, an ion, it gets square brackets in charge. And this is an ion. And it gets ion written in capital letters. And this is one of the reasons it's important to know your nomenclature, because this is the sulfate ion. And for example, in sodium sulfate, it is important to know that there's not one, but two sodium ions and one sulfate ion, three ions total. Because, and knowing this is a sulfate, helps you to make sure that you know that they stay together. When we break this up into ions or when we do the next problem, the S and the O4, they never break apart. So now let's look at number two, how many ions are in Na3PO4? Well, our process goes something like this. I see the metal. This is an ionic compound, so there will be ions. Then I know that sodium, because I know my nomenclature, Na plus, and that this three means there are three of them. And I know that sodium in group one has a plus one charge. And then phosphate, I don't know if I know its name, but since there are three pluses for the, each of the uh, three single, each of the Na pluses, then the PO4 must be a three minus it must stay together because ionic compounds are typically made out of one type of positive thing and one type of negative thing as well. And if you know that this is phosphate from memorizing your nomenclature, that's great. So to answer the question now, how many ions are in sodium phosphate? And again, the name of this is just sodium phosphate. Sodium phosphate, there will be four total ions just like there were three in sodium sulfate.